Today we have a 2019 Ford Transit T350 and we're gonna be taking a look at the Kurt two inch class three hitch receiver. A two inch hitch receiver is very useful. If you're one that is using it for towing, I would definitely recommend looking at some of our wiring kits for a four pole or seven pole just to get the electric back to your trailer so all your lights and functions work. Also with you sports and rec people out there, with this, you have a lot of passengers inside. So it'd be nice to get some more cargo space out here because the roof is kind of tall. Roof rack is gonna be a little bit more difficult to do, but you can use that for that. Also with bikes and other types of accessories we have here at E-Trailer. As far as tongue weight goes, we're gonna have a maximum tongue weight of 900 pounds and the gross trailer weight is going to be a max of 6,000 pounds. But if you do use a weight distribution system on your setup, it'll go all the way up to 8,000 pounds. If you are gonna be hauling some heavier trailers, one, you just wanna make sure that your vehicle is gonna be rated for just as much as the hitch, because the lower number of the two is gonna be the number you're gonna to have to stop at. So that being said, if you are going to be hauling some heavier trailers, and if they do have electric brakes, I would definitely recommend looking at our site for some brake controllers. This is gonna save the brakes on your transit, so you use the brakes on your trailer to slow it down and not just the brakes on your transit. And if you are a recreational type user of the hitch, I do recommend one thing, and it is a swing away system. And what that is, is it goes in between your hitch and your accessory, allowing it to swing out so you can still fully access the back because a lot of these accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers, when they're on here, we're not gonna be able to fully open this up. So if you really want to use the back of your transit, the way you did before you had the accessory in, that swing away system is very, very cool for this transit. For your accessories, the diameter of the hitch pin hole on this hitch is gonna be five eighths of an inch in diameter. So just make sure you have one for your accessories and the five eighths is gonna be the ideal size. When it comes to hauling, we're gonna need some safety chains. There's plenty of loop there to even get the bigger hooks like you see here. But if you do have some smaller hooks, they're also gonna fit. Here are some useful measurements. We're gonna go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the bumper. I'm gonna say it's about seven and a half inches. This is gonna give you an idea if your accessory is going to be able to fold up like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. And then going from the inside top lip of the hitch receiver to the ground, it's about 14 and a half inches. This is going to help you see if you're gonna to need to have any sort of rise or drop if you wanted to put a ball mount in your hitch. I've officially installed all the hitches we carry for your transit on this vehicle. When it comes to the class three hitches, there's a couple of them on our site. They all install the exact same. They do make you kind of have to tap into your frame a little bit. That's something that I don't necessarily love, but it wasn't that hard. But if you do wanna go one step up, we do have a class four hitch available for your transit. It's gonna be a little bit more heavy duty. So if you are one that's gonna be hauling with it, you might wanna go with that. And it doesn't make you tap into the frame. Now we can go through the installation process to show you how we got this installed. We're gonna be using three holes on both the driver and the passenger side. So on the driver side, I'm gonna show you one is gonna be for our carriage bolt and the little plate that comes with our kit. And then these two right here, these are not gonna be threaded. So you'll take your little bolt that doesn't look fully circular. It's not a defect. This is a self-tapping, not a self-tapping bolt, but it's going to tap our threads in. So what we wanna do is you're gonna take that bolt on these two on both sides. And what we wanna do is take it we wanna get it going with our hand a little bit. It's gonna be super hard to kind of get it to stay there. But the whole goal with this is to keep it as perpendicular to the frame as possible, so as straight as possible. We can go ahead and start to do our best and thread this in. Slow and steady wins the race. And just making sure that it stays nice and straight giving a little bit of pressure to it will help. Eventually it's gonna catch and start to thread those in. It's 
starting to get a little harder, so that's good. We're relatively straight. So we'll just keep going until most of this bolt is all threaded in. Once we get it started, if you really wanted to, you can take an impact to kind of drill it up a little bit further if it's getting a little hard on you. But just make sure we get a couple threads done by hand for sure. Once we have them all tapped, what you want to do is take some lubricant or some penetrating oil, kind of spray it on in there a little bit. Take your tube brush and clean out those threads a little bit. And also kind of clean off the bolt that we ran in and brought back out. Smart thing to do is to kind of place them somewhere to where the bolts that were ran in on this hole is going to be the same one we put in later for the install. I highly recommend doing that. So take that tube brush, take a little shop towel or something and clean it out the best you can. For the last hole on both sides, so the one back behind the two that we already just tapped, so we need to get our hardware in. We do give you a fish wire in the kit, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. You don't really need it for this, but I'm gonna show you. You're gonna take the coiled part, we're gonna go through the hole like that. We're gonna take our little bracket here put that in and then we're gonna take our bolt and thread this in like that it's very satisfying and we want to get all the threads on there just in case it falls off and once that's done we can pull this wire through jiggle it around a little bit and then we can take this off we'll do that on the same side so this is the driver side over here on the passenger side, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because of the exhaust, but not too difficult. So right here is where we're gonna go on the passenger side. Go ahead and grab a buddy. This is gonna make it a lot easier. You can either take the fish wire that we kept on here and fish it through that farthest back hole, or like what he's doing over there, you just kind of line it up. Either way is gonna work. We just wanna get that nice and stuck through. You can either do this one or you can do this one because this one seems to be a little easier to do right away. Try to thread it up as much as you can and you can just let her hang. And then we can go ahead and do this bolt after the other one because it's a little bit easier that way to set up. I like to get these somewhat hand tight and you want to kind of push up on the hitch as much as you can. Make sure it's nice and flush with that frame and then we can do the same for all our remaining holes so there's gonna be three on each side both driver and passenger for the two silver bolts right here that's gonna be a 17 millimeter socket the one back here is gonna be a 19 millimeter i like to just take it with the ratchet and get it nice and snug first before we torque it down fully a torque wrench is a very useful tool in a lot of different situations. We do have some here if you just want to add it to your toolbox, or you can just go to a store in town and just rent run for the day. But we do want to tighten these down to the specifications in our instructions. Very quick and easy installation just to enable your 2019 Ford Transit T350 to do a little bit more. And again, this was the Kurt 2-inch Class 3 hitch receiver.